Um, what I will do in this short presentation is to introduce some of the ideas to link smart technologies and urban governance, um, and that is to better understand the impact of smartification on cities, whether it's best to think about smart digitalization as evolution or revolution in the urban context. And this is interesting because in creating a market for smart city technologies, tech providers offer often revolutionary solutions that promise to fundamentally transform city planning and development, the management of urban infrastructures and services, and also more broadly urban life and experience. However, in contrast with such promises, real-world implementations and the emerging actually existing smart city highlight how insufficient attention given to the complexity of social and political dimensions of cities can in fact lead to varying degrees of success or an outright failure of tech solutionism. There is thus an emerging need to better engage with the socio-technical system of systems nature of cities and to recognize that smartification does not start from a blank page, but instead is an intervention into an existing urban context, which is both physical and technical and social and political. And addressing this issue in turn requires better understanding of the role of urban governance, citizens and stakeholders in making a city truly smart. And so based on this premise, um, in the remainder of this talk, I will outline how an interdisciplinary socio-technical approach can bring value to evaluate the ongoing smartification of cities. And specifically, the question I ask here is, um, and I encourage the audience to reflect on it within their own research and practice, is the following. Um, how does the shift in focus from a purely technical towards a socio-technical perspective influence the design and implementation of smart city technologies? So to address this issue, um, uh, a year or so ago, uh, we designed a study around an emerging smart city technology uh, the CityScale Digital Twin. And as with most smart city technologies, the development of city digital twins has been largely driven by the supply side without much consideration for local governance, citizens and stakeholders. And in fact, the response to urban challenges is often to integrate all relevant data streams from various sectors into one single source of fruit model. Um, and in relation to urban governance, then these digital twins are aimed at producing evidence as automated decision-making systems for management, for example, traffic rerouting, emergency response, so for example, early learning systems, and simulation environments for spatial planning and development. However, while these contemporary advanced methods of data collection, processing, and analytics uh, may improve the quality of evidence in a narrow techno-scientific sense, does that necessarily automatically translate into an improved use of evidence in urban policy and management? So this got me interested in how city digital twins may fit into um, decision-making processes in urban planning and management, and specifically the role as evidence in decision-making of the scenarios and recommendations that they provide. So in order to better understand this, we engaged with different uh, local and regional authorities, urban analysts, private sector stakeholders, and community groups in Cambridge. And first we discussed um, we focused on mapping the different stakeholders and the relationships between them. And then um, we introduced the broad concept of city digital twins and asked them to imagine alternative futures with this technology. So we discussed with stakeholders their interpretations of the challenges the region is facing, the way, ways in which these are being addressed and the potential shortcomings. And out of these conversations came that while there is a significant in interdependence between transport, energy and air quality policies and interventions, um, these decision making processes are most often logged into organizational sectoral silos and collaboration and oversight are, are lacking. So we identified the purpose for a Cambridge City Digital Twin as supporting a more joined up decision making at the intersection of these domains. Um, and this is a lot of information here, but um, essentially this purpose at the nexus of uh, various policy domains meant that there was no one problem owner to be identified. So we had to map the relevant uh, governance landscape and, and had to engage with a variety of stakeholders from the public and private sectors, as well as citizens, local residents and employees to understand what kind of digital tool they would consider useful from their perspectives. And their views didn't always reflect data-specific considerations. So, for example, they reflected on issues such as improving the consistency of results from existing unconnected modeling exercises or the accessibility of models for citizens as well as uh, stakeholders. 
they considered it an important factor to be able to use the tool themselves in a dynamic way and to be able to understand at least in broad strokes what it does, what data it uses and how it produces outcomes. Cambridge citizens did not reject data-driven uh, data decision-making as such, but they wanted more transparency and accessibility as modeling is used to support economic development targets, which then have a direct impact on their everyday lives. So based on these inputs, uh, my colleague, Dr. Lee Wan, uh, who is a lecturer at Land Economy now, proposed a digital twin prototype to investigate future journeys, of work, uh, future journeys to work in the Cambridge City region and associate its socioeconomic implications with the aim of unraveling some of the key interdependencies among infrastructure systems and uh, supporting more holistic problem solving. And the proposed twin brings together considerations for data analytics, simulations and interaction, culminating in an easy to use user interface, which is accessible online and does not require special IT equipment to run. The potential use of the digital twin was then discussed with stakeholders in relation to illustrative scenarios for um, remote working and its impact on uh, potential impact on traffic reduction. This was before the pandemic. Um, and also options to steer the spatial distribution of electric vehicle charging demand, linking it to energy infrastructure upgrade requirements. So what are the implications of taking the socio-technical perspective on smartification and city digital twins? First, rather than prioritizing technical complexity in, situ in digital twin development, a better starting point might actually be understanding and learning more about gaps in understanding of systemic interdependencies and data-driven evidence logged into various silos. And city digital twins can develop gradually then through challenge-led context-sensitive modules providing loose links between specialist uh, urban systems models. And then second, city digital twins must be designed and implemented so that they are perceived as usable and useful by uh, the prospective users. This is because in order to improve the use of evidence in policy decision making, city digital twins can and should contribute to both individual and organizational learning, which is crucial to support just smartification in urban planning and management. So as a final thought, um, city digital twins can contribute to smarter urban planning and management, but by locking their development into a one-dimensional, exclusively technology-focused perspective, we risk being confined to simplistic problem definitions and solution options at potentially without adequately addressing the root causes of the most pressing challenges cities face today. So this talk demonstrated how taking a socio-technical perspective can, can help addressing some of these problems, and we hope that the approach will be picked up by others uh, to develop various smart city technologies that are more appropriate to address the pressing challenges cities are facing today. Thank you very much.